who I talked to for the last time. I did not wake up my daughter, my God. Hi, my name is Sarah Jade and welcome to my channel where we talk about true crime, unsolved cases and more. In this week's case we'll be talking about Emma Walker and how she mysteriously died in her sleep one night. In the fall of 2014, a spirited young freshman called Emma Walker joined the cheerleading squad. Emma was 14 at the time, a loved cheerleading and was very passionate about the game and leading the team. She was a beautiful, vibrant and warm-hearted cheerleader. She was also a very good friend and a very good student. She loved animals and volunteered at an animal shelter and wanted to be a NICU nurse when she grew up. She was very popular and always so bubbly and always had a smile that could light up the room. When out practicing one night, she caught the eye of an older student, a junior called Riley Gull. Riley was just a normal guy who was a little bit nerdy on the inside. He was described as the boy next door who was very polite, very nice and also very likeable. Riley and Emma started dating and soon they were spending every evening together after the football game going round her house to eat and hang out. At the start they seemed very happy together. They started to spend a lot of time together and just go out paddle boarding and enjoy each other's company. Her friends described their relationship as just a normal teenage relationship. They said he didn't speak to them very much but they put that down to him being very shy. However, after a while her friends got quite concerned as it appeared as though Riley didn't want Emma to hang out with anyone. He got quite controlling over her and what she did. He didn't like her hanging around with her friends and wanted to spend all their time together. As time went on, things got even worse. He became quite possessive, clingy and wouldn't let her do certain things. The relationship went on for about two years and over that time they used to break up, then make up and get back together. They would have these huge arguments over the phone and on Snapchat. He started to tell her that she couldn't wear certain things and also started to tell her what she should wear. Around this time, her mum started to get a bit concerned. She was telling her that he shouldn't be telling you what to wear and who to hang out with and she didn't like the way he was treating her. Then things got worse when he started to wait outside her work for her. He would wait there for hours and hours while she was at work. Her friends tried to tell her that it wasn't right and that he wasn't treating her the way he should be. But she used to just brush it off and say, oh, it's fine, it's just him, that's the way he is. During their arguments, the messages started to get worse and worse. He started to say things like, I hate you, I hate everything about you. Watch the obituary, because your name will be in there. You are dead to me. When she questioned him about these messages, he just said he was very angry and was upset and he was sorry and didn't really mean it. When her parents found out about these arguments and the way he was talking to her, they stepped in and banned him from coming to the house. They also took Emma's phone away and said you won't be talking to him. However, it didn't work because he gave Emma an iPod touch which they could communicate through. After every argument, he would grovel and ask her to just take him back and he was really sorry they he didn't mean what he was saying. But her mum would be on the other side saying, look, end this relationship, it's not good. It's not the way he should be treating you. By fall 2016, Riley had graduated as a freshman, but he was still dating Emma. Her mum and dad were so upset by this and decided to take things even further. They grounded her and said she could only go out to go to school and to cheerleading. And all the other time, she'd be at home so she couldn't see Riley. And to their surprise, it started to work and they started to see their old Emma come back. She started to tell her friends that she was done, she'd had enough of him and their relationship was over. Her friends were so relieved and her mum and dad could finally breathe. They thought that's it. This is the end of their relationship. He can't control her anymore and she can get on with her life. However, one person didn't really take this news very well and this was Riley. After the breakup, he decided to try and kill himself in his dorm room. He took a load of pills and drank it down with a load of alcohol. However, he survived. His friends started to notice his mood swings. He spent a lot of time moping, hanging around and feeling depressed. On Friday the 18th of November 2016, Emma Walker was attending a party at one of her friends' house. While at the party, she received a text message from someone she didn't know. So she showed her friend, Zach. The messages were saying things like, come outside alone if you don't want to see a loved one get hurt. And I've got someone you love. If you don't comply, I will hurt them. She sent a message back saying, I'm going to call the police if you don't stop this. And they sent one back saying, I'm going to dump Riley outside. Her and Zach ran outside and outside they found a body laying down in the ditch. When they got closer, they realised it was Riley. He turned over and acted all confused and didn't know why he was there. He kept saying, they kidnapped me and they threw me in the car and they just dumped me here. I don't know what's going on. At this, Emma came very suspicious 
And she just got annoyed with him and said, just leave me alone. We're not even together anymore. Why are you here? Go away. Leave me alone. Riley walked off dejected and called one of his friends to come and pick him up. He told him about the kidnapping, but when they suggested he called the police, he got all upset and said, no, I don't want to get them involved. I just want to go home. That's my statement. That's us. And I pulled out the driveway. And this van pulled over across the semicircle. circle. And these two guys are like walking across the street. Next thing I know, one of them grabs my back. The other one's around the corner. And they just like put their hands on my face and just took me to their van or whatever. Why would I do it? I genuinely have no idea. They did ask me, they were like, um, like, who would you want to talk to for the last time? And so I started freaking out, and I said, Emma. And they made me call Emma, and I was just crying and screaming. She thought it was a joke. She thought I was playing a prank on The next morning, Emma was at her house alone, and she started to get quite worried, as she felt someone was outside and been following her. She called one of her friends and said she was worried, and she felt like there was a stranger hanging outside her door. There was a man out there dressed in all black, and was ringing the doorbell and just wouldn't go away. Emma was so frightened she didn't know what to do. Although she was upset with Riley, she really needed his help, so she just texted him and said, please can you come over as there's a man hanging outside my door. He texted back straight away and turned up at their house. And that's when she faced my call. She was crying, freaking out, so I said, okay, I'll come and check it out. As they were talking in the front yard, her mum came back home. She'd been planning to meet Emma for lunch, and when she didn't turn up, she decided to go home and see where she was. When she turned up at the house and saw that Riley was there, she was so upset that she told him to leave and leave Emma alone. Emma said that it wasn't Riley's fault and he was just here to help her. And she said, don't you see that he's involved? The two events that happened over the last few days and he's always there to help you. Don't you find that very suspicious? I think you need to stay away from him. At this time, her mum was so concerned about her and just wanted to keep an eye on her. Around 6am on Monday the 21st of November in 2016, Emma's mum went into her room to wake her up. She came over to her and started shaking her, but she didn't wake up. As soon as she saw her face, she knew something was wrong. She pulled up her covers and checked for a pulse, but when she couldn't find one, she panicked and called the police. She doesn't really remember much after that. When the police first attended the scene, they thought that it was a suicide and that Emma had killed herself. However, when photographing the room, they started to see holes in her wall. When looking closer, they realised it was a bullet hole and it was about shoulder high. They then went outside the house and looked around the area around Emma's room and realised there was another hole in the wall as well, also about shoulder high. They then found bullet cases around the scene outside the house. When checking Emma's body, they discovered that she'd been shot from outside the house. One of the bullets had lodged into her pillow and the other one had shot her in the head just behind her left ear. The police started to investigate and speak to all her friends and family and one name kept coming up and that was Riley's. Her friends and family were so devastated and decided to hold a candlelight vigil around the Central High School and they released balloons at the next football game in her memory. After the incident Riley was acting very strange and his friends actually went to the police to report this. They mentioned how he had his grandfather's gun and he said he only had it for protection but also asked them how they would remove fingerprints from the gun. They brought Riley in for questioning, but he said he wasn't involved and he had just been at his friend Noah's house that night. But strangely, throughout this whole interview, he didn't call Emma by her name. He just called her that girl every time they asked him. And they even asked him, who's that girl? And they said, the one that you found that was dead. He never called her by her name. The girl, she, uh, she texted me. Which girl? The one that passed away. No. What, which one? He did say that he tried to call her that night from one of his friend's phones, but she just blew him off and said he didn't want to speak to her. Oh, there was uh, how much I loved her. Uh, you know, sorry that she didn't want what we had anymore. She said she didn't care about the relationship anymore. She said she cared about me. She loved me. She didn't care to me anymore. And he'd just gone to his grandfather's house and just got very upset and sat in the car and cried. And that's before he went to his friend's Noah's house. I sat in the parking lot just looking at the they then asked him about the gun and he denies this and said he never had it and he didn't ask them how to remove fingerprints from the gun. He said he wasn't involved in her murder and had just been at his friend's house. I hope to God I'm not 
a suspect in her death. Did I say you were not? I hope you don't think it. Because I will hurt back. Girl, for, you know, I, I would hurt myself if I hurt her. That's what I'm Did you shoot in the episodes? However, when leaving the police station, he messaged some of his friends and told them not to speak to the police again. At this, his friends became even more concerned and believed that he was involved in her murder. They decided to cooperate with the police and help them to catch him. Although the police said it's very dangerous and they didn't want them involved, they really wanted to the help. They wanted to set up a trap so they could catch him in the act and get him to talk about what really happened. After going through all the dangers of the police, they were wired up and a camera was put in one of their fobs. They invited Riley over to play a video game and Riley started to talk to them and coach them on what they should say to the police. He was trying to convince them to tell the police that they were on drugs when they went to see them, and nothing they were saying was true. I don't know who shot him. I put that on my life. I'm not, I wouldn't lie to you right here, right now. I don't know who did. I would never hurt her a day in my life. I had that gun because I was scared about what happened. I know you don't believe me. You probably don't either. Whatever. You told me you're on LSD, you were drunk, and you were high. Your mind was altered. Whatever statement you give them wasn't a straightforward answer. But then he started talking about the gun and how he wanted to go behind the wooded area near the Tennessee River to dump the gun. His friends started chatting to him and convinced him they should go tonight. They said they would go and get the gun and they would help him dump him in the river and that would be the end of it. The police wouldn't be able to find any evidence to point him to the murder. I'm trusting you guys, like, with my life because, I mean, this is 70 years in jail if I get convicted of something I didn't do. And... Are you guys, are you busy right now? Like, are you about to do anything? Or well, can we go to the bluffs? Because I, I need to get rid of the gun at the bluff. I'm going to throw it in the water. They will never, they'll never find it. So they all get in the car and drive to Riley's grandfather's house. He'd hidden the gun in the basement. And while they waited in the car, he went in the house and came out with a bag. Success. Just in there. In there. He got in the back of the car, but he wouldn't show them the gun. I just want to throw it and be done. Although they were very nervous, his friends wanted to keep it quite casual, so he wouldn't suspect anything was happening. So they started joking with him and went to his favourite fast food restaurant to order some food. After finishing their food, they went to a apartment complex, where they went through the gate as one of them knew the codes. While they were sitting in the car, Riley started to put on gloves and pulled out the gun. His friend McCarthy shouted, oh my god, it's a real gun. <laughs> this is a real gun. At this, the police realised they had to get to the scene. However, they tried to get into the complex, but they didn't know the code. It took them over 90 seconds to get in. One of his friends grabbed the gun off him to keep Riley from doing anything with the gun. Everybody put your hands out of the vehicle now! What the f***? Oh my god, my... What the f***? Leave your hands out of the vehicle! Luckily, their plan had worked and they caught Riley with the gun. They also found the black clothing and the gloves that were used and confirmed that he was a mystery man that was ringing on her doorbell that day. At the trial, Riley said he didn't mean to kill Emma. He'd done it as another scare tactic to get her to come back to him. He said that if he just shot through her wall, she'd get so scared and come back to him, he would be her protector and didn't want to harm her. However, after five hours of deliberation, the jury came back and found 19-year-old Riley guilty of first-degree murder. He was also found guilty of stalking, theft, reckless endangerment and being in possession of a gun. At his sentencing, he kept to his story and said that it was just an accident and he just wanted to try and get her back. He apologised to all her family and said he didn't mean to kill her. I just tell the truth of what happened that night. My intentions were not and never have been to cause him any physical harm. At times, I was a terrible boyfriend. I caused her emotional and psychological pain for the two years that we were together. But I never once even imagined it caused her any physical harm. My intentions that night were never to harm Emma, let alone take her life. I wanted to scare her, to frighten her so bad that she would have no choice but to talk to me again, to confide in me. I would be there to comfort her and to win her back. I love Emma, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her or what I did. I know that I can't be forgiven, and this will never be forgotten. But now that the truth is out, I pray that it's enough to show that I never meant to take him as well. He received a life sentence for his crime. Since her death, her family have tried to keep her name alive by naming a dog park and a NICU room in her honour, as she loved animals and always wanted to be a NICU nurse when she grew up. They're also working really hard to raise awareness of domestic abuse. 
I attach the numbers below if you or anyone you know needs some of those numbers. Thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one. You call me a saint but you know I'm a stranger, a willing and able.